Well, there we are, worms, casters, and a bit of mud. That's what we're gonna to use today, and we're gonna catch a lovely mixed bag, I hope. Hopefully, I'll show you exactly how to catch with these fantastic baits at this time of year. Well, as far as baits go, I've got a couple of pints of casters, more than enough for today. Um, I've got, well, I've brought a kilo of worms, but a kilo of bag will probably last you three, maybe even four sessions. I'm gonna chop up, it's probably, it's probably a quarter of a kilo of worms there, really nice and neat. I've, I've got every single last bit of mud off there. It's important for chopping them later, which I'll show you in a sec. And then the only other thing I've got is some black peat. Um, I've slopped some up already, and, um, and I've got some, um, just some normal sort of damp, dampness of peat as well. You could use some, the, the soil out of, your, out of your sack of worms. So just riddle that off and you can use the soil out of your worms or you could use worm cast or anything like that. But I prefer black sedge peat, not Irish moss peat, which is what you generally get a lot of garden centers. If you can find sedge peat, that's better. I'll just bring a bag, uh, one or two bags like that is absolutely ample for today. Um, I've just split one of those bags into two tubs and I'm gonna have a sloppy mix for fishing shallow and then I'm gonna have a stiffer mix for fishing on the bottom. And as far as where I'm gonna fish, I've got two margin swims and then a swim about seven, eight meters. And I'm, uh, seven, eight meters, I'm gonna be fishing up and down and down the size. I'm just gonna try and keep them down. If they wanna come up, I'll try and catch them up. I'll catch them shallow, but that's it. So worms, casters, and a bit of sedge peat. Well, you can happily use um, chop worm scissors or, or normal scissors or whatever to chop your worms, but a much quicker and effective way I find is with a, a kitchen roto chef um, chopper. These are for chopping herbs and condiments and things, um, um, and you can get them from uh, all sorts of online shops now. And uh, you've got a pull release, and it just makes mincemeat of, uh, of worms. And um, as long as your worms are completely clean, you've got no um, fibers, no mud or, or, or stones or anything in there, it'll work brilliantly. So I'm just gonna take a big dollop. I'm probably not even gonna chop all these up to begin with. Just one, one big dollop in there. So I've probably only got two thirds of those in there. Pop the lid on. And then three chops. And you can see it's already chopped it into lovely little bits. And I'm going to keep going another four or five times. And there you are, absolutely. Just be ever so careful with those blades, they're razor sharp. But there we are, perfectly minced worm. You can go even fine if you want it into a soup. And obviously if you want some coarser bits of worm, just pop some in and chop them up with scissors. But that sort of consistency, about the size of a caster, is all I'm after. And that took seconds, far quicker than using scissors. And uh, so half of that is gonna go in my slop mix, and the other half is gonna go in my me, in me stiffer mix. And that's that. And then about the same amount of casters. You could measure this out, but it, it's really, you know, I, I'm not too bothered about measuring quantities and that because I'll add and subtract. I'm not doing a massive batch all in one go. I'll just add and subtract if I need to. So there we are. I'm going to mix that all in. So this is quite a sloppy mix. And as you can see, there's actually not a lot of worm and caster in there, but there's enough to get these fish um, excited and get them to take your hook bait. I'm not giving them loads and loads of feed. That's the beauty of this black peat. It makes a lovely rich cloud, but there's no feed. You're not giving them fish meal, you're not giving them ground bait. And at this time of year, with it being red hot, the fish aren't always that hungry. So um, I'm giving them maximum attraction, but only a few casters, a few little bits of worm in there each time. And then the other mix, again, I'm just gonna mix it all in. And I might just add a tiny bit of water. All I want to do is be able to squeeze it into a slightly harder ball. So I'm just, just a tiny amount of water. I don't want it to be a, a sloppy soup. I'm just going to add a little bit of water. And there you are. Maybe a touch more. Oh, like a skimmer or something jumping down the side. And there we are. So that's it. I can make a little ball, a stiffer ball, that will go straight down if I need to get them on the bottom. And that's what I'm gonna be feeding, either sloppy or stiffer balls, or just loose fed casters. And we're gonna mix and match between the three and see what's best on the day. 
So uh, the only other thing you definitely need is a tub of water and a towel. And that's it. Well, I'm gonna go in softly, softly to begin with, and I'm just gonna feed a little nugget like that on the, what I class as my seven, eight meter line to begin with, and um, the same down either side. And maybe, maybe just a few loose casters over the top, and that's it, on each side. And we're just gonna regularly um, keep potting in some of the, uh, some of the, um, the peat mix and loose feed casters. Um, and down the size, I'm fully expecting to loose feed casters more than feeding the worms. So anyway, so that's what we're gonna feed at the start. I'm gonna pop that in. I'm gonna start long, so that's a, that's a swim I'm gonna feed first. And I'm going out, it's a top kit and three, but I'm actually holding the fourth section. So between my number five and number six section, I'm actually gonna feed, I'm lining up with the fountain on the, uh, on the adjacent lake. I'm just gonna plop that in. A few casters all spread, but that ball will go straight down. It's a good six foot deep there, and it's three foot down the side. So, and it's about a top kit and one either side can't get any further it's quite overgrown down the sides which is nice loads of cover loads of oxygen full of fish and uh, food and everything so again another little nugget like that a few casters I'm gonna feed that down the left there it plums up a little bit higgledy piggledy down there it's actually a little bit further than a top kit this there uh, top kit and one and then the same down the right now there's a there's a pipe comes into my right and um, last week we caught some barbel there, so I'm hopefully going to catch some more barbel down there. That's my bank of catching a few barbel if they're about. Um, there was some carp mooching around there when we got here. But, and I'm going to feed that there. That's it. Simple as that. And let's go straight out on the uh, full deck rig. Half gram rig. It's quite windy today, so um, it's quite a breeze on it. So I'm fishing a half gram... Um, positive wire stem rig and I'm just going to fish a biggish bit of worm to begin with but I fully expect to use tiny bits the size of a caster even but I'm going to I tend to hook a hook it through the dark part of the head then break off the amount I want so I'm going to fish half a worm to begin with just to see if there's anything big knocking around but I fully expect to be fishing tinier bits than that most of the session so let's get out I've got a big toss spot on the end as well, and I will be um, toss spotting mostly. Um, I might even, that's the large one at the moment, I might put the medium one on soon. We'll see how it goes, but we'll just keep potting it in and potting it in. We've not fed a lot of bait. It's more peat than bait, so uh, I'm fully expecting, you know, a quick response. Sometimes carp are straight on the scene, but there's always a few skimmers and silverfish knocking around, if not. Nice positive rig. I've got number nine droppers to show up everything. Just a bulk and two number nine droppers. And I'm fishing um, an o, uh, four inches of 012 to a 16 MXC one. Um, I've got a mixture of shallow rigs as well to try. Cool, the wind is getting up. But um, just because I want to experiment, I've set up more shallow rigs than I normally would. Just because I'm going to use today as an experiment for myself really. Um, so I can fish bits of worm, caster, and banded caster shallow as well. I've got all three things to try. But on the bottom, I'm just going to fish mostly worm, maybe a single caster if, uh, if it's hard. But I'm going to give this probably 30, 40 seconds. If I don't get a bite, I'll come back and I'll plop another little ball in. And I'm quickly going to start loose feeding a few casters over the top as well. Just ring that little dinner bell and find my catapult. Just keep dinking a few casters in. I'd like to get them shallow, but this approach means you can fish up and down in the water. And if you keep feeding, keep putting that worm mix in, you'll catch fish on the bottom that wouldn't necessarily come up shallow. So no bites on that. I'm just gonna come back, put another little nugget in this big pot. Not, not so big this time, about the size of a conker. So that's squeezed together in a nice little ball, so it will go straight down. There's a lot of roach and stuff in this lake as well. So at least that's gonna bomb through them to some quality fish on the bottom, hopefully. 
I don't mind making a bit of noise. Plop. You get a little bit of a black cloud as well for the fish to follow it down. And whilst we're doing that, we're going to just lose feed, a, a pinch more casters. I'm not going to lash in bait yet until I know what's going on. Skimmer. Lovely little lift bite that. It's important to have those big dropper shot to show up bites like that. And uh, the other thing, blobs of slime, make sure you get every last little bit off before you go back out. And that bit of worm, still good to go. It's a beauty of worm. There's a bit more slime there, which I missed. That's the beauty of worm, is you can uh, catch several fish on the same hook bait. Let's try a bit of sloppy, uh, sloppy peat this time. See if we can get them up in the water as well. This is a lovely sort of top and bottom approach. Start on the bottom, catch a few fish there, see if they'll come up. And uh, on a good day, you'll be able to catch really well shallow, and then when it goes quiet, drop back down again. And you catch a few on the bottom, and just keep working between the two. Whenever you've got time, just, just throw a few casters down one or both of your edges. There's a nice little bubble coming up as well now, which is good. Oh, shot under. Again, I'm just going to... Just accurately just flick a few casters. If you start foul looking a lot of fish or you're getting loads of strange bites and that, then that's obviously the cue to come shallow. Some days they'll come up, some days, especially with being so warm today, they might be happier in the cooler water lower down. So uh, they don't read the rule books, these fish. But I do expect to catch some shallow a bit later on. I won't give it too long before I have a look down my sides as well. Some days the margins, especially this time of year, the margins are particularly good, almost from the off. You know, it's not like necessarily a last hour approach, this style of fishing. There's always silvers and, and different species. There's a big carp just going to sniff my float there. <laughs> Another lift bite. Oh, feels a bit better, maybe. Oi! Oh, he jumped off the hook. <laughs> oh. Did you get that? Let's go back in. A bit more. A bit more of me mush. I mean, that amount I mixed up will probably last me about three hours, you know. There you are. I've had a chub on a caster. I went straight down with a bit of worm, caught two or three little perch, put a caster on and caught a chub. Hopefully there's a few more. Now this might be a barb all the way he's pulling. All different sizes. Little scrapper, don't mean it's very big. Yeah, little barbel. So we've got three species already. No, four species. A little skimmer, perch, barbel and a chub. <laughs> Lovely little barbel. Right, it's been a bit hard on the bottom on uh, that longer line, but I'm convinced they're up in water instead. So I'm gonna uh, pop a little pot on. I've been throwing a bit of slop, but I'm gonna also just 
plop some accurately and try and lower the rig in with it. And with a tiny bit of worm on the hook and uh, see what's about. I'm sure there's fish up in the water and it just might be a day where they're just happier up in the water than on the bottom. We've caught some barbel and chub and uh, a hybrid on the uh, down the side so uh, they just don't seem to want to be on the on the bottom in six foot of water out there which is not too surprising I suppose. And I'm going to swap between worms and casters sometimes worms is better sometimes they they show a preference for the casters but feeding them both together we've got options Ooh, that was one they might be even shallower than that by the looks of it there's a little fish on the end there we are. yeah that's what the culprit is <laughs> another perch so what I'm going to do, I'm going to, uh, oh that one fell off, I'm going to put a caster on instead and uh, I might even try a banded caster in a bit. Well, it's been a little bit moody out there but there's been an odd big fish charging through the peg and this one's just swirled. I saw a flash of orange and I think we're connected to a a carp, <laughs> a big ghosty I think it is, which is good fun on 8 to 10 slick and I know 12 bottom but I'm confident getting it out if he behaves. What I'm going to do is keep throwing some casters a little bit more slop out there whilst he's there. Maybe if we get a few of these out the peg it will settle down but I've, they just seem to be gate crashing through the peg a little bit but it's a lovely looking fish so uh, be nice if we can get him out. Oh. Come to Johnny. That was on a little bit of worm. Just sometimes think when them carp are mooching around, they do upset the other fish a little bit. They're lovely to catch though. <laughs> Just wrap round him now. Come on. Yeah, he's just wrapped round his fin just then. He was definitely in the mouth when I hooked him, but he's just wrapped round one of his pecks, I think. That's it, he's coming back the right way now. Yeah, he was in the mouth, he just wrapped around his peck. Well, he wasn't coming off, well hooked. Find my disgorger. Nice looking fish. And the worm's still good to go as well. Catch another one on that. Let's have a look at him. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely fish. It's behaving now. It wasn't very easy to net though. Well, shallow fishing has been a bit weird. There's been big carp milling around. I've had a couple of flying skimmers, but none of the F1s or I'd I was expecting. But um, I've just had this great big carp just come out out the blue. I didn't even see this one in the peg, but he's got to be, he's got to be 10 pound. I tell you what, I can't pick him up, but I'm going to hold it up like that so you can see. Great big thing, he's got a big belly on him, but a hell of a bonus when the uh, F1s and the I'd aren't feeding. But yeah, single caster that one. I've just seen another big dark shape just come in. I've literally thrown a little nugget of slop like that and the fish has come straight in. I just could just about make out a shadow in the white water. Flicked a little bit of worm on its head and it's had it. Another carp. Not sure if this one's a ghosty, I think this is a normal carp. 
but uh, definitely showing interest. This it was probably a, a couple of feet off the back of the feed, but that's that's not not uncommon. Just flick the flick the bait past the oh. <laughs> Just flick the bait past the uh, past the cloud, and there's often a, a carp or two hanging off the back. Oh, they are angry fish. Must have just wrapped round him or something. Then the way he went. Good going on a short kit. These. Uh, risk shipping back. And the top kit. Oh, it is a ghosty. It's another ghosty. <laughs> oh no, it's not. It's just a big mirror that just stops swimming. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it just looked very orange from the top, but it is. It's actually a normal mirror cracker. Very lean fish. I'm not going to pick him up. He's he's got a lot of fight in that one still. I think. But, uh, wow. <sighs> Shall have a look at the rig. All right. I've just caught that fish, so I'm going to prime the peg, throw a little bit more slop in, and let's have a look at the rig. I just caught it on. Um, I've took the pot off now because there's a lot of carp cruising around and I don't want to spook it with my pot, but I can accurately throw and I'm fishing an area anyway. So, uh, but the rig is pretty simple. It's a little tiny 0.1 gram float and it takes three number 12s. We, I've got one under the float because it's a carbon stem. It will just help it break through that surface tension and a light float like this. And then two down the line. And what's that? That is a 16 inches deep. That's what I've caught my last two fish at and I've got probably a good foot above the line a couple of back shot for stability and it's on 018 line because it's a light float you want strongish you know thickish line 018 is the minimum I'd go 018 or even 020 and that'll just cut down on tangles and keep everything nice and stiff and then I've got an 014 hook length to a size 16 MXC1 hook and that's it and um, strung out right I, I like to fish a bulk for F1s and I'd if they were coming thick and fast. But when there's carp about and when they're coming at all sorts of levels, just really nicely strung. And just those two number 12s will just help that line go through the surface tension and um, single caster or a bit of worm on the hook. I'll put a single caster on this time, see if we can get one on there. But I've been having some roach and skimmers and bits and bobs on it as well. But every now and again, a carp pops up in the swim and uh, it's been, this rig's been dealing with them all and a 10 to 12 slick as well for it. And I'm only using a short kit. Um, you could use a normal length kit today with those big fish, but to be honest, it's dealing all right. I've lost one and that's about it. So uh, let's throw another little ball of slop and just try and ship straight into that ball. I don't mind if it splits midair because uh, that's two areas of attraction then. I'm not throwing massive bits. Ooh, what we got there? It's like a perch. Oh no, a little roach. Surprising what you can get in on this gear though. There's another ghosty. Oh yeah. Oh, that's the one I've been seeing going up and down all day. That is a beauty. If he comes in, absolute beauty. Oh, <laughs> bit lucky. That is an absolute stunner. I'm not sure, is that a nice fish to end on? Absolute cracker. I might try and catch another one, but I think that's the perfect fish to end this film on. Bit of worm, bit of slop. 
it's a few casters and uh, it's amazing what you can catch. Let's have a quick look at him and uh, I think that's a perfect fish to end on. Absolute beaut. <laughs> Come on, let's put you back. <laughs> 